What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel and welcome to my kitchen. Now you might be thinking, Rebel, why are you inside? Why are you in your kitchen? That's such a small space. That is correct. Today I'm going to show you some different moves to practice when you are stuck in small spaces. Now throughout the quarantine and honestly just this whole year of 2020 and probably into 2021, there are lots of times that we are stuck inside. So moving out of the summer months and into the winter months, it's important to maintain your skating practice, but a lot of times we're stuck with small spaces. So today I'm gonna give you just like a list of things that you can practice in your house and we are going to do it in this kitchen. Now this kitchen, has floors that have grooves in them and the grooves in these floors are actually going to make it a little bit more difficult for me to practice in here but we're going to show you anyways so we have this small little area and this is this is all the room that we have so we're just gonna demonstrate what it's like to have a small amount of room um, for this video i've taken off my toe stops because there are some things that i think will be good without your toe stops but you can do this just as good with toe stops on as well. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing that we're gonna work on is we're gonna work on some bubbles, stops, and transitions. So these are all things that are gonna help you if you are just learning how to skate or you're trying to get down basic street skating or basic just cruising. Practicing these things will be really easy inside and will also really be helpful to you in your roller skating journey. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to practice is we're gonna practice our bubbles and we can do that in a really small space. We don't have to just bubble a bunch of times in a row. We can just bubble back and forth. So we can go bubble to the front and then bubble back. And then just practicing this movement is a really great starting movement for learning how to skate and also learning how to stop. So just practicing this in this small movement is really awesome. It's really going to not only work like this muscle and this muscle right here, but it's also gonna help you get control over your feet and bringing in and bringing out your legs. Other basic things that we can practice that have to do with just like basic skating knowledge is we can actually practice our stops. And the reason why I suggest practicing the stops is because you're going at such a slow speed that you're really going to be able to learn how to control the body movements. So just branching off of that bubble that we started and we were going forward and backward, this is actually the beginning. This is how I teach plow stops. So you're doing your bubble forward and then you just bend and you angle your feet forward a little bit and you can practice your plow stop that way. So you don't even have to have a lot of momentum. You can just go from a backwards bubble or even just from nothing at all and then practice that plow stop stance. Another stop that you could practice is you could practice your T-stop. And the way you practice your T-stop, again, for a full video on how to T-stop, you can just watch this video up here. But you, once you're like practicing your T-stop shape and movement with your feet, then you can just move a little bit and then practice just getting into that motion. So just in a small area, practicing your T-stop with whichever foot is best for you and practicing that gliding in, especially like a small space like a kitchen, is actually really, really helpful. And then you'll be able to upgrade that later once you have a little bit more space. So let's say you have this much space, I'm gliding, and then I'm doing my T-stop. Look at that! Practicing learning how to skate in a small area. You know what's hard to do in a small area? What? Record. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, Shove is the MVP on this video. Um, another thing that we can practice in this small area that is in learning how to skate mode is our transitions. And so remember that our transitions, we're gonna practice by opening the book and then closing the book. You can just practice this in a space as long as you have this much room around you. You can literally practice your transitions going either way. So you can practice going to the right and then you can just keep going in like a big circle until you're super busy. 
Diz <laughs> busy, dizzy. Or you could practice going to the left. Woo! And again, you want to make sure that you are not around any sharp edges or anything in case you do fall. You don't want to hit your head or anything like that. But you can also try like a very small, like if you're only going a little bit of distance, you're really going slow, you can try doing your transitions. And then you're like, look at that. I was practicing transitions in my kitchen. <laughs> All right, so any small thing that like you struggle with, with actually the basics of skating, you can break it down to a small part and then practice that in a small area. The next thing that we are going to be practicing in our small space is little workouts on skates. Now, you might think like, ugh, working out, the worst. But when you put skates on your feet, it's a little bit more fun and a little bit more cool. So in your small space, you can actually do a myriad of different workouts and you can have your skates on and that's not only going to help you with like cross training for your skating, but it's also going to help you feel more stable on your skates. So when you're in a small area, one thing, and this is like the most popular thing to do, is either to do a wall sit with your skates. I'm so bad at this, I go flying out every time. Don't have toe stops, remember that. So I'm gonna, I'm not doing it well because I don't have toe stops, so I'm scared I'm gonna fall over. But you're doing a wall sit, so you're doing a squat against the wall in your skates. That's a really good thing to practice. Another really good thing to practice is just doing squats without a wall. So like you're going down, you're on your skate, so it's like a little bit actually more work and you're working out and you're getting your stability on your skates as well. Also people will do sit-ups with their skates and so if you're in a small area like this and you're like doing this, you could do this movement. Or you could even do like actual just regular sit-ups. I'm not a workout expert, so don't quote me. But any workout you do, you could do it with skates on. Especially if you're doing like small workouts or like or like try and touch your feet. <sighs> I'm so out of shape. But that's the reason why we do this stuff is because almost all of us are out of shape. Because it's like, what is 2020? Are we supposed to be in shape this year? <laughs> I don't know. You can also in a small area with your skates on, you can stretch. So you can work out, you can stretch, and doing all of these with your skates. Having skates on, honestly, is kind of like having little weights on your feet. And so just imagine, like, fun weights, all for you. If you're, like, really good, you could do pistol squats, but I'm not. But doing pistol squats would really be helpful with, like, a lot of different cool dance skate moves. Next, we're gonna talk about balancing on our skates. So when you're balancing, you're establishing your ability to move from one foot to the other, which is really, really helpful when you are trying to actually just stride, but it's also helpful for when you are trying to establish different tricks for yourself. And this could work for just skating down the street, but also if you're doing skate parks, you can also like practice the actual body movement of different tricks just in one place. So if you wanted to practice like a Marilyn, you could practice the move of the Marilyn in a small space. So I'm gonna show you a couple different moves that you could practice right now that will help you with your balance on each of your feet with all four of your wheels on the ground, either foot that you choose. Balancing is an incredibly important part of roller skating in general, but also of doing any roller skating tricks. So you're gonna first practice just balancing on either foot, so making sure you're comfortable balancing on your right skate and balancing on your left skate. And once you feel like pretty comfortable, like staying for a while or going back and forth, then you're also gonna wanna try practicing different moves that are tricks that you can practice just in a small area. So imagine you see a skate trick and you see it on Instagram, you see it on YouTube, you're like, oh my God, that's so cool. I want you to look at that skate trick, see what body position they're making within it, and then practice that movement on your skates 
when you're stagnant like in a kitchen or something like that so like for example if you think that the movement where people are skating down the street and they're going like this then you would practice just like balancing like that and so you're getting your body into different positions or maybe you're like and like that's why like counters are really great at first like you can hold yourself and be like okay I'm gonna practice this position and then you get used to doing that position and your body a lot of it is like muscle memory and so you're teaching your body to make those movements and to be balanced in those movements now that we're feeling pretty confident balancing on one foot or the other now we're gonna work on just balancing on half of the wheels of each foot. So we're gonna practice our manuals because you can easily practice those in a small space. We're gonna practice going on just our toes, like our front two wheels on each skate and also on our back two wheels on each skate. This is really gonna help if we are like interested in dance skating or we wanna do different cool uh, agile moves, then this is really gonna be helpful. So let's practice those next. So we're going to practice manuals and what a manual is, it's like on one of your feet, you're on your heels and on your other foot, you're on your toes. So you could practice like being in this position. You could practice being in the position on both feet and you can go, you can also like your counters are there for a reason. Like you can use them to stable yourself and then feel what it feels like to be in that movement. So you're going to practice doing manuals, you can practice them being still, you can also practice them moving, which this is one of those moves that if you have like <laughs> tile, that might mess with you. Because this is really easy to do when you're going fast, but not that easy to do when you're going slow. And so you can practice different types of doing manuals. You can also practice just being on your toes. So this one's really hard for me, but you're just like balancing. <laughs> you're just like balancing on your toes. Whoa, you're scaring me. Again, hold on to the counter. But you can hold on to the counter if you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. Like you can hold on to a counter and then practice being in that movement. And so being on your toes, that's a gateway into a bunch of different dance moves. And you can also practice being on just your heels. So like if you can, again, hold on to there if you need to, but you can practice being in one spot. Woo! Oh my God, I almost had a heart attack. You can practice being in one spot or you can practice like moving with them, but you're practicing putting your weight on different parts of your feet. And so if you, for example, live in a space where you can really only practice outside for half of the year, this is a really great way to really build your skills so that when you take it outside and you're able to go back out there, you're going to have all of these like foundational skills that are really going to help you pick up on different things really quickly. This almost took me down. <laughs> Finally, and one of my favorites is when you have a really small space to work with, you actually can still do a lot of dance skating steps. So even if you aren't able to fully like do a whole choreographed thing or really make your moves and like move around, you still are able to practice those basic steps. And so we're going to try and practice some of our dance move steps right now in our small space. But think about different dance moves and how you can break those down and the small parts of the bigger dance moves, you might be able to practice those small moves in the small space and then once you have a bigger space you're able to go outside again or to like a tennis court then you can move them all together and really create that like flowing dance that you're trying to work towards i don't recommend wearing like a sweatsuit when you do this because it's actually like quite a bit of a workout and so yeah <laughs> one thing that you can practice is crazy legs when i started learning crazy legs which is this one oh my god this is so hard to do with it with the tile but when i started learning crazy legs i just started like holding on to something and then i would go like like i would just do that and it was like your legs would get so shaky and it's so hard but then once you keep practicing and practicing then you can start finding that balance like 
outside of holding on to something and then you can speed it up or slow it down but honestly with crazy legs you only need like this much space so it's a perfect thing to practice inside another thing that you can practice is you can practice doing like the oh if you have a little bit more space <laughs> you could practice doing the downtown like this is as small as I can make it but this is like a two by four area so you can practice doing the downtown that's something that you can do you can also practice like the zero but again just be really mindful that you definitely can kick things when you are doing this um, and you definitely can like hit things and then fall and hit your head maybe wear a helmet so maybe if you have a small area and you have a lot of sharp edges maybe wear a helmet <laughs> that's honestly a suggestion I'm making um, you can also just practice different like floor dance moves or different just any kind of dance moves you can think of to practice like I like practicing this one oh it's cute with the pants But the more you practice your movements, the more confident your body is going to feel and your mind is going to feel because you'll grasp the movements and breaking them down is like really great for your skate development. And if you're really, really brave, which I'm not, so I will not be doing, you can practice spinning. Um, the reason why I'm not gonna demonstrate practicing spinning is because every time I spin in a small space, I fall and I hurt myself. So we're not doing that today, but if you're really good at spinning or if you just wanna practice like a little bit, you could practice like little spins like this. I'm not trying the well, actual like- Don't do a fast one. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing a fast spin indoors, but you can do like a, like a little bit of a, like a scoot spin. And um, you could also do like, like this kind of a spin. I feel like that would be pretty safe. And yeah. So those are my suggestions of what to do when you only have a small space. I highly suggest that you don't just practice the exact examples that I demonstrated for you, but rather that you take the concepts that I've taught you and build upon them. So I've told you, hey, I think it would be a great idea if you did basic learning how to skate movements. And so if there's different parts of learning how to skate that you're struggling with, break those down and then try those in small spaces. Or if there's different dance moves that you see other people doing that you think are really cool, try and figure out what the different parts of those dance moves are and practice those in your small spaces. So know that your small space, although intimidating, is actually really, really helpful to you for learning and establishing mastery within skating. And I'm so excited to hear about your progress so don't forget to let me know about all the things that you're doing in your small spaces. Thanks for watching this episode of Queer Girl Straight Skates. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And put in the comments different things that you're practicing inside your house, what areas you're practicing in, just like my little kitchen. And if you want to get some cool stuff, I have some tie-dyed Queer Girl Street skate shirts that are for sale in my Etsy shop, as well as some dope patches and stickers. And if you really want to support me, you can become a Patreon, and I make like really cool vlogs every week week for my Patreons and a special video every month for one of my tiers. And most, most importantly, cheers to the queers! <laughs>